over the first quarter, how are the conditions? And then, you know, over 50% of them said the conditions are deteriorating in the sector. So these are the operating conditions. Uh, and then we asked them, what do you think will happen in the ne over the next quarter? 60%, so a higher number, they think over the next quarter, 60% things will get worse. So they are looking to see in this quarter that we're in that what, the, what we experienced in the last quarter actually gets worse in this quarter. Although then they look a little bit more optimistic if they look in terms of what's going to happen over the next year. So the conditions as they see them. And only um, you know, uh, a few, about 10% said things improved in the first quarter. Uh, and that number stays very stable. And one of the other issues that we think of in terms of the operating environment um, is their borrowing. So we ask them, are you borrowing more? Are your debt levels going up or are your debt levels coming down? Now this is an interesting one because I suppose there's two sides to the story. If you're borrowing more, it might mean that you're adding capacity uh, to be able to manufacture more or you are being squeezed because of the fact that you are um, having to borrow more. But I would suggest that in this case, they're being squeezed in terms of cash flows, given um, their operating conditions. In the last um, survey, they had not felt the biting of the interest rates. Now they're saying, look, we are paying uh, more interest rates. That makes sense, given the monetary policy stance that we are feeling. And they also hear, we are hearing um, comments such that the banks are also tightening the belts. Nearly half of the manufacturers we spoke to said um, their sales are contracting. 15% of them said, they are unchanged, and we had um, a good chunk, about 25% quarter, saying their sales volumes increased by over 10%. So there's, suppose, some life there. But it's interesting, I think many of those are saying because we are exporting to Africa. And then we're seeing also um, some who are exporting. Um, few of the exporters actually saw their sales contracting. So those who are exporting are saying 20% of them saying, well, we saw contractions. Uh, and then about 45% saying, well, our sales volumes have not changed in terms of exports, and the rest of them, about a big chunk actually, saying above 10% or so, they are seeing growth. 10% of what they manufactured are set and sold, so stocks are piling up, which actually does make sense in terms of the borrowing, because then you need short-term borrowing as opposed to keep you afloat, given that your sales volumes are, are deteriorating and you're not making um, as much money. Export growth is not as high as we would have wanted it to or would have expected it to be, and that is disappointing given the level of the rent. But again, we have said this before, that it does take a little bit of time to build capacity, to switch uh, in order to be able to manufacture, to export. And we are now three months into that very weak 15 rand level. And I suppose in a sense, people still have to then pick up um, in terms of actually making sure that they build the factory and they add the factory capacity to be able to export. But at the same time, we do know also that you know, global conditions um, in Europe, as we said, and the US are still quite, uh, quite tough. And then we say, okay, so we've talked about sales, what happens to input costs? And they're saying, we're seeing sales coming down, but input costs are escalating. Uh, so with total input costs, are quite high, uh, above 10%, closer to 12, and imported input costs also quite high. Now that is interesting because also we would understand the weaker rent has a double whammy. We know that our manufacturers do tend to import much of their uh, of their inputs, and so you know their materials, uh, their intermediary goods are being imported, and that means that import costs at a weaker rent. Are actually will start to escalate. So the weaker end might be good, but it already you know, is good in the longer term or medium to longer term. But what you feel immediately are the input costs that start to bite. And that's something that we have to watch um, quite closely. And so what they said was um, average total inputted cost were about 10% or so. We also asked them the question around what are the drivers of costs? Um, so we look at labor, materials, and utilities. Those are the big, big drivers, right? And materials are a big one. Again, it speaks to what we said about imported costs. If you are, if you are importing uh, your intermediate goods, you are going to have those materials increasing. Um, and then, of course, we know that we've got also inflation problems locally. So even if we are thinking about, if you're a food manufacturer, for example, imported, uh, your costs of materials are a little bit higher. Um, labor costs, surprisingly, the last time labor costs were a big deal, 
not so much this time around, but that also makes sense. We know that, you know, in this environment, um, increases in wages have not been as high as we've seen um, in the past. And then, of course, utilities. And this is one we have to watch out uh, more. So utilities stayed a, a little bit stable if we compare to the previous quarter, which was the end of last year. But we know that in the quarter now that we're in, which is the second quarter, we're expecting that ESCOM tariff hike to kick in. We know that the costs will come through from petrol uh, and other taxes that the, 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 the Treasury uh, laid on at their last budget. So we, we will see a lot of these costs coming through in this quarter in terms of utilities. So we're probably looking to see what will happen when we ask them these questions next. So there's a lot of pressure really coming through in terms of uh, input costs. Given that there are all these tough, this tough environment, what have you done to actually change it? Are you changing anything? Are you changing the structure of your business? Are you becoming more competitive? Um, are you doing a little bit more training? And really, you can see, and I think this has grown since the last time, 83% this time, I think it was about 50% the last time we spoke, um, said that they were implementing um, new methods to become more competitive. Mm -hmm.